One of the students for the course noticed an error in the rounding for the near path. So we're going to go through what that error is and we're going to show you a fix for that error. Now if you get into the resources section you'll see the Logisim file so you can go ahead and open that up. Now what we'll do is we'll drop down inside. So there wasn't any change in the far path so the far path just remained exactly as it was previously. We're only interested in the near path here. And the near path with a value of an exponent difference of zero Again, it's still okay because there's no rounding involved in that. But it's what happens whenever there's an exponent difference of 1 in the near path. So what would be happening previously is that we would be shifting the mantissa right by that value of 1. And what would happen is the bit, the least significant bit here, would drop off the end. So if I made that an exponent difference of 1, then this one bit here would drop off the end. And that's it dropping off the end. And the previous videos, I didn't take care of that one bit shift. So, and we have to deal with that one bit shift. So what we're going to do, if we head down into the next section. So there's no change in that section, but if we head down into this next block here, what we want to be able to do is whenever we find the smallest in the two's complement and then do this addition, we actually want to do it not only with the 24 bits for the, our values mx and my, we want to do it also for that lost bit as well. So it means that we want to do the addition and subtraction with the loss bit that comes out here. And that's the thing that was missing from the previous videos. And I found a nice little fix, and it's a bit of a dirty fix, but it does work, and I'll show you what that fix is. So if we consider the exponent difference of 1, and also the exponent difference of 0. So first of all, the exponent difference of 1. Now what we have here in the left is a representation of the most significant 24 bits. And what we have on the right is going to be the least significant 24 bits. So in effect, whenever we shift this by a value of 1 to the right, then this one here is going to drop out into this position here. And that's what you can see here. We've shifted this to the right. So this x has dropped in here and this 1 has dropped into this position. Now, if we were going to do the 2's complement from the very end of this point here, then what we would do is we would invert all of these values. So you can see I've inverted them all here. And then we could add the value of 1 on. So when we add the value of 1, we get 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. And you can get that all the way along until you get to the final point here, which is a value of 1. So you can see here that at this point, we don't carry anything over into this set of 24 bits. So that means that what we could do in this instance to get the correct answer is whenever we do the 2's complement, we were doing the 2's complement on this set of 24 bits here. So we were adding the value of 1 in at this point here. And it was this addition of the value at the, this point here, this addition of 1 at this point here, that was given us the wrong answer. In effect, the addition of 1 should have occurred back here. But it shows you here then that we have a solution. Because we, when we add this one in all the way along, it only gets to this point here and it doesn't get any further. So it means that whenever we perform the 2's complement subtraction, or 2's complement addition, sorry, for the exponent difference of 1, then we don't need to add in that value of 1. Because it never gets 
into the next 24 bits anyway. So we could, instead of adding the value of 1 for our 2's complement, we could just add the value of 0. And I'll go in and I'll show you that in the actual circuit. So if we head down, down into the circuit here, you'll see that when I come down here, whenever we do the 2's complement, we would be inverting it, so this is the inversion stage, and then we would be adding the value of 1 on. But what we're saying now is that if we've got an exponent difference of 1, then we don't need to add that value of 1 in. We could in effect just add the value of 0. So we've got the value of 0 here, and we've got to make that choice. So if the exponent difference, that is ex minus ey, is equal to a value of 1, then it's going to choose this bottom one here, which is 0. And that will ensure that it gives us the correct answer. But we also have to be careful, because that's not going to work for us whenever we have an exponent difference of 0. If the exponent difference is a value of 0, then we would have, for instance, a cross here, and we would have either a 1 or a 0 in this position. But we wouldn't be shifting anything to the right. So that means that if we were to perform a 2's complement here, and we were to invert everything, so we would invert every one of these, and then if we added 1 on to every one of these, then this would be 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1, 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1, and it would, that would carry all the way through. And eventually, when we got to this point here, there would be a 1 carried through in here. But the 1 carried through in here, in effect, is just the addition of 1 for the 2's complement. So it means that we can, for the exponent difference of 0, we can just leave this as it is. That is, we just add the value of 1 on. So if we come back into the Logisim file, you'll be able to see that if I make this a little bit bigger, you'll be able to see here that if the exponent difference is actually a value of 0, then it will just choose the top one here, which is just the addition of 1. So that's a simple and a quite an, a, well, a reasonably neat fix for this problem. Now, there's one other thing I never took care of, and it's a simple little thing as well, and that is that we didn't have the injection of a guard or an injection of a round bit whenever we were doing the near path calculations. The guard and the round bit only occurred in the far path. So it means that whenever we're working in the near path, we're not going to be injecting any round bit. So if I come down here, and you'll see here that I've added an extra little AND gate here, and what that does is it tests to find out whether we're using the near or the far path. Now, if we were using the near path, then this would be a value of zero, and it wouldn't pass on any rounding bit. But if it was a far path, then this would be a value of one, and it would just pass the rounding bit on per the truth table here. So that's the little fix that I had to add in in order to get that final part of the rounding correct. And I'll use that fix through the rest of the videos. So if you've got any issues with that or you're not too sure, then just get in contact. What I suggest you do is you put in a few values. In fact, I'll give you a value that we can try just now. So if you go ahead and try these numbers, so C1736042, and if we're adding on 40E6B853, so when we're saying we're adding on, one of them is a negative, so in effect a subtraction occurs. Now, the correct answer here after the rounding has been corrected is the C1000418. Now, without that corrected rounding, this value would actually be C100041A. 
So you can go ahead and try those numbers and try a few other numbers yourself. And if, if you're unsure, remember you can always stick in the probes into each of the positions here. And when you stick the probes in, you can always remember to change the probe to hexadecimal. So you can stick in a probe here, for example. Face it south and you can change this to the hexadecimal value. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.